Hey, what's up, guys? This is Mario back again with another trade video. How are you guys doing? It is Friday, uh, TGIF. Uh, thank God it's Friday. Uh, so I'm going to go over two trades that I made. Actually, I only made one trade, but I invested in one of the, one of the companies that I'm going to talk about. Uh, and I actually missed the day trade, so go figure. But I still made money in the long-term account. Again, that's the reason why I like to both um, invest in the long-term and also day trade because I get the opportunity to make money both ways. And I'm going to explain to you guys that in a second. So I actually did end up uh, in, uh, investing in Alibaba. And, and also there was a nice opportunity to day trade it today on a uh, low-hanging fruit long after it had a first green day yesterday. Uh, so Alibaba has been, you know, been oversold on the, on the chart. And I'm going to show you guys a chart in a second. And uh, I decided to buy long, my long-term account because I felt that, you know, it's still a great company and it's, it's pulling back at very important support levels in the chart. So you know what? It's a great opportunity to buy. Uh, it's oversold on this, uh, in the Bollinger Bands, stochastics, you know, it's oversold uh, in terms of the technical levels. So, hey, I bought some. And today was an update, uh, a really good uh, day trading opportunity as well. Uh, but I missed it. I wasn't on my computer. I was doing something else. I'm actually here with my family for the holidays. So I had to travel yesterday. Uh, so I was in 100. Now, I also did I have the opportunity to day trade Roku. Now, I did make some money there uh, in a day trade. Uh, so I want to I want to kind of cover that day trade as well and, and another uh, uh, low hanging fruit second day continuation. And I'm going to kind of go over that as well. Uh, now, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, let's get started. Let me uh, share my screen really quick. OK, so let's go over uh, Alibaba first. So Alibaba, you know, if you look at the one year chart, it's been trending really nicely. Um, and it was not until like recently where it had this huge uh, gap down and it started selling off heavily. Now, this gap down right here was all based on the uh, Chinese antitrust uh, regulations uh, that may affect Alibaba or, or large technology companies in China like Alibaba, like Tencent and, and others uh, and Alibaba, of course. So it, it, it sold off. It sold off heavily. But it actually started to test a very, very important support level here at 260. So I'm looking at here in 260 and I'm thinking, you know what, this might be a great opportunity to buy for the long term account. I still believe in the, in the company. Uh, last week during uh, singles days on, on November 11th, they had, a, I believe, a record number of sales of $75 billion in sales in one day. That's record. That is a record amount of sales in one day. Uh, so that's, that is huge, guys. I hope you guys understand how big that is. So I still believe in the company. I still believe there's a lot of opportunity for growth long term. Uh, even though there might be some regulation regarding antitrust, I still believe just because of how um, porn Alibaba is in the Chinese market uh, in China, there's still a lot of room for growth. So I decided to buy my long-term account. I actually started buying dips uh, below 260. And I felt that was a really good area, anything below 260. And I was actually looking for also a, uh, a first green day and also a second day continuation of that. And the reason why I was looking for uh, first green day was because if you look at the Bollinger Bands, and let me show you the Bollinger Bands, it was definitely oversold. You know, actually, let me, let me uh, zoom into the chart. So again, you got multiple days in a row of red. One, two, three, four, five days in a row that it was red. Again, below 260 major level. And you look at the stochastics here, it's like it was actually at like six, which is considered over oversold. So a bounce was going to happen sooner or later. Now, yesterday we had a first green day. I didn't get a, a opportunity to day trade that. It was actually a really nice consolidation and break out of that. I, I missed this trade. This would have been a really nice trade. Uh, but I, I was traveling, so um, you know, didn't get the chance to do that. But there was still an opportunity today on a on a second day move, uh, and I also missed that, unfortunately. Uh, because, uh, you know, I wasn't in my screens and I'm still kind of getting used to my new surroundings here with my family uh, for the holidays. Uh, but it was an, a great, another great opportunity here on this week open consolidation and reclaim a VWAP. And it literally just trended all day. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, even though I missed those day trading opportunities the last two days, uh, including today and yesterday, I still made money in my long-term account. 
And that's something that I want to emphasize uh, for those who are all day traders. I also recommend you guys to consider investing in the long term because there is an edge. Um, it allows you to, it kind of, for being a long term investor, it forces you to kind of dig deep into the um, underlying news and also earnings, uh, uh, like, you know, fundamentals like earnings and, and looking at the, you know, guidance and, and, and those type of reports, especially earnings reports, SC filings. And, and really, um, you know, kind of helps you uh, know the company more in depth and knowing that and having that back of your mind gives you an edge to become a better day trader. So I always do emphasize that and I highly, highly recommend to look into that. Um, now, uh, another company, uh, so another uh, company that I'm looking at uh, today as well was uh, Roku. Uh, so even though, again, like I said, I miss uh, those day trades on Baba, I still made money in my long-term account. So I was like, I'm okay, you know, you miss some, you win some, but hey, you know, regardless, I still made money in the move. That's what matters. Uh, now, Roku, Roku is another, another company uh, that's had a huge move ever since the pandemic started. So the pandemic started, of course, like around March of this year, and pretty much all the stay-at-home plays started to get huge volume and, and getting, started to get bought off, like Roku, Netflix, Peloton, um, and Zoom, you know, all these companies have benefited from the pandemic and Roku was one of them. Now, Roku is still in his long-term trend. Uh, they had a really, really nice uh, earnings report here on, um, on November 5th, uh, but they, they got, a, they got, they got kind of sold off on November, uh, 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 let me see, November 9th. And November 9th, if I am correct, was actually the day that Pfizer uh, reported it in the news that um, they had the uh, vaccine for COVID, COVID-19, that it was a 90% um, effective, effective rate uh, of, that it will work. So that was huge news. So there was a huge sector rotation out of stay-at-home plays into stocks that got heavily affected by the pandemic, like airlines and oil companies and like restaurants and uh, Roku was one of the companies that got sold off. Now it eventually got bought off again. So, you know, the, the trend still held uh, just because there's, again, the pandemic is not over. We still have a lot of time, uh, you know, for, for not only, even though the, a vaccine already exists, it, it has a high probability of success. Again, there's, there's just all this, all this issue about distribution you know, having every single person in America, if, if possible, to take the vaccine, which most likely that's not going to be the case. So not only do we have to wait until uh, distribution, we have a mass distribution of the vaccine, but to wait for everybody to take it, or maybe most likely not everybody's going to take it because some people are actually against vaccines. So at least have enough people to take the vaccine where it starts to kind of help and bring down the numbers of COVID cases. So again, that may take a while. It's hard, it's hard to really know. It might, a lot of people are predicting, I know Morgan Stanley was, had a report that predicted that that may happen around uh, second quarter of 2021, which we're looking at around July, August. But even if, if the vaccine is available uh, to the masses, again, people still have to take it and we have to still see uh, how effective it's going to be. Um, you know, if again, I guess really what matters at this point is if people actually take it. So, and hopefully that could curve the, uh, you know, the, the, the amounts of numbers of, of, of COVID-19 and kind of bring that bell curve down. So that's, that's what we, we're, we're waiting for. Uh, but again, uh, because that it hasn't come happened yet, you know, companies like Roku, Netflix, again, they're still trending. They're still trending. And, and that was an example of what happened yesterday with uh, Roku. You know, investors saw an opportunity. Hey, let's buy this dip, you know. Uh, the pandemic thing's not over. You know, let's, let's keep buying this dip. It broke up, broke, broke over 240 uh, yesterday with it large volume and today what i was thinking was like hey you know i, I like the large volume it had yesterday i'm interested in, in um, for a second day move low hanging fruit and second day continuation so i was actually originally looking for a pullback to the midpoint area to buy some dips here and hopefully we had like a nice uh, you know sell off and then kind of like bounce and continue to trend uh it did open a little weak but it kind of held uh below yesterday's uh, uh previous close and so after that, you know, I was looking, you know, um, let me wait for some consolidation. Uh, let me wait for some consolidation. So my original plan was this. 
you know, it was, and again, this was all before zombie hours, before the first hour of the, of the, of the opening of the market open. So I was looking for this. Um, I was looking for some consolidation, first of all. So we had a little consolidation here, breakdown, and it, and it kind of reclaimed the VWAP, and it started to kind of like make this uh, wedge-looking type of pattern. So I'm like, you know what? I like to trade wedge patterns. They're usually bullish for me, especially in this type of situation. So my thought process is like, okay, if it breaks this trend, I'm gonna get in. If it breaks through 60, I'm gonna add to the winner and go kind of full size. And my thought process is like, okay, if it breaks this, it might break six to 60s and continue to trend and maybe start testing 263, 265s. Now it hit 261. There was a lot of uh, resistance in that area. I did notice. A lot of sell volume on the uh, on the level two, uh, so I decided to take some profits and I decided to stop on the rest because it pulled back to my entry position. So I pretty much took off the rest, um, you know, and it was a small win, but nonetheless, it was still a win. Now, eventually, it did end up consolidating even more, and it ended up finally trending the way I wanted it to originally trend but it didn't happen until like a uh, second and the, during the midday. Now I do tend to avoid a midday trading uh, or trading after the zombie hour, just because, you know, in terms of how I trade my probabilities are not as good as the first hour. Uh, as a day trader for me, uh, trading the first hour of the day uh, always has the best probabilities for my thought process, my game plan to work. Um, and I go and again, that's not some trades might not work. Some trades may need an additional time to consolidate to make that move that I'm looking for. And again, Roku was that example today. But looking at my numbers, looking at my stats, overall, the first hour of the day, I tend to trade the best. After the first hour, I get, you know, I get uh, sleepy or <laughs> I get tired or I get annoyed or I lose my patience. So besides, you know, other, those factors, you know, um, and, and, and the trend and all that, uh, they kind of lower my performance and I end up messing up, either chasing or making some risk management issues. So it doesn't make any sense. You know, the first hour of the training day is the highest probability for me to be successful in day training. So after that, hey, I, um, take it, I listen to my rules, stay disciplined, get out of the market and call it a day. So that's pretty much uh, was the trade with Roku guys. So um, again, Roku overall, hey, I, I actually do own Roku in my long-term account, but I actually bought a long time ago and I've been taking profits. I think I bought around, uh, around the 150s. Yeah, I bought around 150s. So, you know, it's almost 300. So it was almost doubled. So I've been taking profits though on, on every spike. So I've been taking profits here in the spike and I do buy at back of the dips, but I haven't bought this time. You know, I kind of wanted to wait to, to see how this uh, sector rotation was going to play out, but it looks like the, the, the stay at home plays are still trending. Now, let me just show you zoom to kind of show you guys that as well, because zoom is another example of that. I also own zoom in my long-term account. And again, it bounced off this 400 level, you know? So, it looks like the whole stay at home plays are, are still, are still looking pretty decent. So we'll see how that works. Um, so, so guys, I mean, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys learned something from this video. Again, I highly, highly recommend or, and emphasize to, if you want to become a successful day trader, if you want to have an edge, also consider becoming a in long-term investor in these companies. Again, these are not tickers. These are companies. Every single company has a story has uh, news, has earnings, uh, has real products and services, has real customers, and those things matter. And those, these, those things do give an edge so for, to help you become a better day trader. So again, hope you guys learned something from this video. Don't forget to smash this like button, the like button, and subscribe to the channel. See you guys soon. Have a good one, guys. Take care.